Yes, they will be. Um, Finn, I want to circle back on something that you said earlier. You said that you think Clemson is this year's Providence. Um, I actually uh, was going to compare Providence to somebody else this year, and I was going to go with Rutgers. I feel like Rutgers is this year's Providence because if you go through and you look at some of the wins that they've had of late, right? Uh, they won at Purdue by a point. Uh, they smacked around Maryland a little bit, but everybody smacks around Maryland. They won at Northwestern by three, which is actually, believe it or not, a good win this year. Uh, they beat Ohio State by four in overtime at home. Those are the three of their last four Big Ten wins. And it just feels like they are the team that knows exactly who they are this year, that has the point guard play to be able to handle those moments, that has the leadership both on the sideline and uh, on the floor to be able to understand what they're trying to do in clutch moments and has that like, that level of belief, right? Like I, I don't necessarily know if I if there's like a clutch gene that people have, but I think that there are certain players and certain human beings that have the confidence and the belief and the ability to handle pressure and understand that they're going to go make a play in a big moment. Um, and there are certain teams, <clears throat> UConn, that may not be able to uh, to handle that kind of a pressure. And to me, Providence last year was a great example of that, and I think Rutgers this year is a great example of that. What do you think? I think you're right. And I think uh, it's ironic. It's a UConn guy, Steve Peichel, who's leading Rutgers and who's led them into historic heights. I mean, I, I don't think people understand, like, Rutgers has never been to three consecutive NCAA tournaments. It's never happened in the history of the program. They, they've never been known to string together season after season of winning. This program lost Geo Baker and Ron Harper Jr. They have a Loyola, Maryland transfer right now named Cam Spencer. Who is who has bald? Mm -hmm. bald. Big shot cam. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. Been fantastic. And and they're just so bought in from an identity perspective. And that's why the Providence comp is good because that's what Red Cooley's teams do. They they buy into who they are. And I think Rutgers does too. It's not pretty, it's not flashy, but I'm gonna tell you what, I I, I was putting together a top 15 today. Guys, I honestly, right now, putting together a top 15, like just stop at like seven. I don't know. I mean, it, everyone's <laughs> losing. I put Rutgers in it. I put Rutgers in it. They've won seven of their last eight games, and they know how to win. They know how to win. And at a certain point, we've got to credit the teams who are doing that, not the teams who are having big letdowns and losing games by double digits and don't even look like themselves. Like, no, I'm not just going to keep putting you in, in rankings because I think you're really good on your best day. No, if you lose, you lose. And for Rutgers, they are figuring out ways – to win continually. Paul Mulcahy is a terrific creator. He's a defender. He mm -hmm. plays tough. Caleb McConnell's one of the best five defenders in America. And one of maybe the best two or three, if he's not the best. Cliff Amore is he's the guy who allows for Rutgers to just provide the grit and the toughness on the interior that you need in the Big Ten. And Omori's taking a big leap. Mawat Mag comes up with a big-time shot in the win over Ohio State. Rutgers has it. They've got a grit factor, a toughness factor that will allow them in the NCAA tournament to be in any game. They're not getting blown out because they defend. They're a real dangerous Oh, RC made a great point last night on, on After Dark. Like, they are – they have a lot of Virginia in them, too, because they're going to do what they do. They're going to play at their pace, and they're going to make you play their way, and they're going to guard you. And you got to find a way to, to to play at their pace. One point I want to make to you, and then I'll let you go. Uh, when they lost to Temple on a neutral floor earlier this season, they did not have Paul Mulcahy, who has been arguably the best point guard um, in the Big Ten. They did not have Caleb McConnell. When they lost at Miami by seven, they did not have Paul McCahey. Uh They lost at Ohio State by one, and then they I think the only like air quotes here – Bad loss on the resume at this point is Seton Hall on a new or uh, Seton Hall at home, and like that's a rivalry game. You can't you can't say anything about a rivalry game. And what is so, that a quadrant two loss? Yeah, it's not even a bad loss. Like it just they they don't they're only really really. All right, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna ones. pocket that what you just said that right. rivalry game that rivalry game thing. I'm gonna pocket that because for later in the show, I have a feeling we're gonna be able to use it again. Anything could happen in a rivalry game. We're going to be able to use that again later. Uh, so, so, Look, you know what, T.O., you're good. You, you can't use it in one Tennessee place today. and not use it you another place. You don't have place. to rep Tennessee today. You're Clemson today, baby. Hey, look, I, I'm going to pocket that, and I'm just going to use it later. So, uh, not, Can you kind of say that be a rivalry man. game? Can we huh? call that a rivalry game, too? What? Sure. Yeah, can Adam, we call that a rivalry game? Yeah, Adam, we want to use that one also. I'm sorry. Go ahead, T.O. Which I'm one? All, I'm, I'm off the I'm off the walls today. He's off the radar. Off the radar. I can't find him. Can't find him. Uh, 
No, they guard. I, that's Steve Michael seems to have always guarded, but now they've got Mulcahy. He is kind of their decision maker. Whenever they're good, he's kind of orchestrating everything. And you need a big shot maker at the end. And Killer Cam, like he's at a couple, and they haven't necessarily been easy. Like shot fake into it, one dribble, threes. Like he, he's he's a tough kid. He's a Pykele kind of kid. And Steve Pykele, as tough as they are defensively. They kind of they have kind of figured out how to at least manufacture shots. Now, are they making a ton of them? No, but they kind of know where they can get them. Um, they're not very good offensively. I mean, they're just not. So I, I think that's kind of the huge thing with a hundred seventeenth in Kim Palm. But like, mm-hmm. it's the defense holds you up and it keeps you in games, and that is a constant with the, anytime you play a Rutgers team. Yep. Well, for, for what it's worth, too, they they got a five star commit mm-hmm. after the win yesterday. Arius Bailey, who's who's in the twenty twenty four class, a five star forward. A number of big time schools were in the mix. He committed in the locker room in Piscataway after the game yesterday. Wow, I mean that's the highest rated recruit in Rutgers basketball history. And it just, no, Amori was Amori was a five star kid, wasn't uh, he? Ba- Bailey is the highest ranked recruit. Yeah, by a you- by a significant margin. Yeah, this kid is top ten. Oh. Amori was like a Amori was a five star. It was a really good prospect, but this top kid is twenty like, or something. I mean, like, Rutgers just got a top ten recruit, guys. And, and, Rutgers, Rutgers, bring them to the rack, and that's they will NIL. come. That's not nil. Like they, mm-hmm. they don't. That's not in New Jersey. That's not nil. Mm-hmm. Not. It, it's wild. Like it, just think about everything that's going on in college basketball this year, and we opened up today's Monday Overreactions podcast talking about Clemson and Rutgers, and it wasn't even forced. Like, this wasn't something where we had to sit here and say, oh. you know what, we got to find a way to talk about new teams. Like, they have legitimately played themselves into the national conversation. Rutgers is 14th on Ken Palm. Yeah. 14th. It's well, wild, they, man. It, it also is a reflection of the sport and the climate in college basketball. Um, the, the playing field has leveled. Yeah, it certainly has. The extra year has helped, too. Yes. The extra year... The, the the talent discrepancy because of that extra year from top to bottom isn't yeah. it isn't as huge a gap mm-hmm. right. right because look at Pykele and look at Brad like Brad Brownell uh, they hang on to guys and they develop them year after year yeah it makes you feel really bad for blue bloods I mean just uh, horrible. horrible I feel horrible for all those blue bloods or dude to play like for going on the years. road and losing at Clemson like those poor guys poor North Carolina. You know, yeah, poor North Carolina. Carolina. They don't get enough five-star recruits. 